Hey there, everybody. Uh, welcome back. This is the fifth lesson uh, on electromagnetism. And um, today what we're going to look at is what happens to conductors that are moving in magnetic fields. So um, what we saw in the last video is that um, when we have these changing magnetic fields or this change in flux, um, if that happens around, say, a coil of wire, then that is going to induce a voltage or an EMF in that coil of wire. That's how we you know, generate power in generators and things like that. So the amount of EMF that's generated is equal to negative N delta phi over T. And just a reminder here that EMF really is the same thing as voltage. So the amount of voltage that you generate is gonna be negative N delta phi over T. And the negative is just there to help remind us that the direction of the current flow is gonna be such that the induced magnetic field opposes a change in external field. But a reminder too that phi really depends on the strength of the field and the area. So we can really think of this Faraday's law as negative N delta B A over T, where the flux is how many field lines are going through a loop of wire. And so we could change that in a couple of ways. We could change the field strength, that would change the flux, or we could change the area. I could take a loop of wire and I could stretch it out, or I could compress it and that would change the flux as well. So with that in mind, let's think about this situation here. So let me explain. We've got We've got a, a situation where we've got this, this yellow bar here is like a, some sort of conductor, just a metal bar, and it's sitting in a magnetic field that we can see here um, denoted by these X's. And so we're gonna take this bar and we're gonna pull it to the right. So we're gonna pull this bar to the right. Now, the bar happens to be um, riding along um, conducting rails. And so those conducting rails you can see here and here are connected by a resistor. And so this makes a complete circuit. And this complete circuit you can see here is gonna kinda of go around and through the resistor and around back to the bar. And what's gonna happen is by pulling this bar to the right, we're actually going to induce a voltage or an EMF across that bar. Since that bar is part of a circuit, then it's gonna drive a current through that circuit. And to calculate the amount of EMF, we say that EMF in this case is equal to B times L times V. And I'll just use that fancy L there because I don't want to confuse it with a, with a one. So E of course is our EMF, which really just is our voltage. And B is going to be our magnetic field strength. L is going to be the length of the bar that is in the field. And then V is going to be the speed of the bar. Now, where that comes from? Well, this actually comes directly from uh, uh, um, Faraday's law, which we talked about before, which is that EMF is going to equal negative N delta BA over uh, T. And you can see, for example, here, like this, this area that I've got right there, I've got this rectangular shape, and that's got a given area. When I pull that bar to the right, I'm actually going to stretch out that area. The, the, the size of that rectangle is going to be increasing as I pull that bar to the right. And so um, if I define the X here as being like the width of the bar and then the length here, the height or length or however you want to think of it as being L, then I can go back to my formula here and say, well, in this case, N, the number of loops of this is just one. There's only one loop. And if I ignore the negative sign for now, um, I would end up with an EMF that is just equal to my change in B times A all over T. Now, note that the field is staying constant and what's changing is the area. So I could write this as my constant field times a change in area over time. And the area is just the length times X, which would be my area. And really, if you think about it, the length is fixed. What's changing is X. So I could write this as B times L times my change in X all divided by t and that's where we probably see it by now where x over t that really is just that's just my velocity and that brings me back to emf equals blv okay now the other thing i want you to consider is that um how did i know that the current was going to flow up the bar like it's flowing up the bar this way and then it ends up flowing around in i guess a, a counterclockwise circle around the the um the circuit so there's two ways that you can think about that and there's two different right-hand rules that you can use to think about that. And I'm going to do my best to demonstrate them to you over video here. So the first is 
that you could you could um, use this right hand rule, which is to say that if you pull the bar to the right, when you pull the bar to the right, then um, there's going to be uh, an induced magnetic force that works against motion. And so you can see this induced magnetic force is right here, Fm. Notice how that is in the opposite direction of the applied force. So if I use my third right hand rule and I point my finger into the page because the field is into the page and the force is back to the left, then you can see that the current ends up going up or up the page. And so I know that current travels up this conductor and then because of the way it's connected to the circuit, you can see that it's gonna continue in a counterclockwise fashion. Now the other way to think about this, if you prefer the other kind of method that we um, talked about in the last um, lesson, is to look at this rectangle and say, well, here I've got a certain rectangle. And as I stretch this rectangle out, I'm increasing the area, which means I'm increasing the flux that's going through this loop. And I'm increasing the flux in a direction that is into the page. Because as I stretch it out, there are more field lines into the page. Well, if there are more field lines into the page, the induced magnetic field is gonna work against that change, which means it's gonna work out of the page. So you could point your thumb out of the page and then your hand will go in a uh, counterclockwise motion and that tells you that your, your current is counterclockwise. So whichever way works better for you, uh, you can use that. Hopefully one of them works better for you. Uh, and um, yeah, so the other thing we're gonna do here is just um, do a couple practice problems. So it's really straightforward. Um, I've got a conducting rod 25 centimeters long moving perpendicular to a magnetic field at a speed of one meters per second. What's the EMF? So the EMF in this case is just BLV, which is really straightforward, 0 0.20 Teslas. The length has to be in meters, so 0 0.25 meters and the speed in meters per second. And this would give me 0 0.050 volts. And so this is a voltage. So if I had to use that, for example, to figure out a current or anything else, I could just use Ohm's law to do that, which we'll see here in the next example. So again, I've got a different rod moving in a different field. So my EMF is gonna equal BLV. And so I get uh, 0 0.30 Teslas times a length of 0 0.15 and a speed of two meters per second. And so my EMF in this case is going to be 0 0.090 volts. But they're not asking for the EMF, they're asking for the current through the circuit. And so the current through the circuit is all related by Ohm's law, where V equals IR. Now you could write V equals IR, or you could write E equals IR, EMF equals IR. For our purposes here, voltage and EMF are the exact same. They're not always the exact same, but for our, our purposes they are. And so the current is just gonna be the voltage divided by the resistance. So 0 0.090 volts divided by my resistance of four ohms, which gives me a current of 0 0.0225 uh, amps for my current. Okay, now last but not least, let's bring it all together and figure out not just the amount of current, but the direction. So, and again, I really encourage you to try this on your own first and see how you do. You can hit pause in the video and then just um, hit unpause and maybe 1.5 times and you can get you there faster. So I've got this bar and I'm moving this bar here. I'm moving it to the left. You can see in that field. Now, um, I'll get the direction afterwards. So I'm just going to worry about the EMF or the current at this point. So the EMF is going to equal B times L times V. Now the field strength is 0.25. And then the speed is um, eight meters per second. That's really straightforward. What I'm not sure about is what should I use as the length? See, the whole length of the bar is 0.75 meters, but the distance between these rails is 0.4 meters. And so what we need to consider is this, is that when we generate a current, the current is going to be generated from here to here, okay? I should say, when we generate an EMF, there's an EMF that's gonna be generated across the entire length of the conductor, but we can only use part of that EMF. The part of the EMF that's actually gonna drive current through the circuit is the EMF that is generated between these two points. So it doesn't really matter how long the bar is, the parts of the bar that extend past the rails aren't gonna generate a usable EMF. Would there be a voltage difference if you measured it? Yes, but it's not gonna actually drive the current through the circuit. So I'm only gonna use this length right here, which is 0.4 zero meters. And this gives me an EMF of 0 0.80 volts. 
I can then just go ahead and solve for the current like I did before. Current is just gonna equal my EMF divided by the resistance, which is 0 0.80 volts over five ohms, and I end up with 0 0.16 amps. But the tricky question to me is, which way is the current gonna be flowing? Is it gonna be flowing uh, like clockwise through this? circuit or counterclockwise. I suppose specifically specifically it's saying what's the direction of the current through point X? So I guess my answer would either be to the left or to the right. We can figure this out two different ways. If you pull this bar to the left, there will be a magnetic induced magnetic force that pulls back to the right. And so if I use my right hand rule, if I've got the field coming out of the page towards me and my force to the right, then that indicates the current will flow up the bar here like this. If I want to double check that, if I've got field lines coming out of the page and I stretch out my rectangle, that's more field lines coming out of the page. So if I want to work against that, then I'm going to stick my thumb pointing into the page and I can see it would go clockwise. So I guess at the point X right there, um, I guess the, uh, the direction of the current would be to the right. Okay, that is it for uh, moving conductors.